Today on Vulnerable, I get to chat with Monique Coleman. Monique is a multi-hyphenate creative actress, speaker, producer, Emmy-nominated host, and a champion for youth. You may remember her from the OG High School Musical movies, in which she plays the iconic Taylor McKessie, the sweet life of Zack and Cody, and ABC's Dancing with the Stars. She is currently starring in Greed, a Seven Deadly Sins story, releasing November 13th. And she is reprising her role on High School Musical, the musical, the series. Monique and I chat a lot about really great topics, such as child advocacy, uh, her uh, imposter syndrome in the industry, and also just her connection to her feminine self. I absolutely adore Monique. She is a part of a very large plan for me, and I want to support her any way I can. So I hope you do enjoy our connection here on Vulnerable. Hey. Hi. <laughs> it's been a minute. It has been a minute. We have all been up to things. We have, indeed. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. This is oh, awesome. Thank you. I'm yeah. really proud of our little set. Yeah, no, it's really cute. I was like, okay, this is cute. This is like super legit. It. <laughs> it's like a set. You yeah, know? it's a whole set. With like multiple cameras. Yes. But for those listening, um, it is Monique Coleman. She is here. Uh, we the last time that we saw each other was in my kitchen all yes. the way in Anaheim. You making a creme brulee. That's right. Yeah. Because your character was into science, and she talks about a creme brulee. Yes, in a, in a High School Musical, and I <laughs> and I thought that it would be very cool to learn how to do it. I have not since made another one. Yeah, they're was, hard to make. Yeah. <laughs> we found that out. I think. <laughs> yes. With the the torching and yes. all the things that it requires, some people really get off on making creme brulee. Yeah. My my father in law is one of them. Okay. He's like, it's like, he's like, he's so excited at Christmas time to like pull the torch out. Wow. And I guess they're, they're moving to, to Texas and I may gift him a torch actually. I love that. that thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Because we're there. Yeah. We're trying to give back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what have you been up to, man? It's been a long time. So it has been a long time. Um, that is a, a layered question. <laughs> I think the way I will answer it is by saying I have been, uh, stepping into my power uh, and growing in authenticity and using my life experience to heal myself and to show up and allow my truth to heal others. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> super yeah. hero shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also speaking of superhero shit, I've also been training. You I know, see. I, I feel um, I'm. You know, I think a lot of times people look at us and think, you know, oh, you were a part of a movie that I recognize or, you know, I, I have certain points in your resume that I can can speak to. That must mean that everything is easy. <laughs> and that is so far from the truth. Um, and what I've recognized is that people can't see something that I don't show them. And I That's have interesting. all of these ambitions and desires that kind of contradict my image or how people perceive me. And so tangibly what I've been doing is I've been training. I've been training in weapons, martial arts, um, Taekwondo. I've picked up dancing again. Mm -hmm. And often people ask, you know, what are you training for? And my answer is, I don't know. I want someone to call me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. when they do call, I just want to be ready for that. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've been, been, that's one of the things that I've been up to. Well, and also too, like with this journey of your self-empowerment, I mean, I've heard many good things about having a strict, uh, you know, like regimen for wellness and working out. I need to do this. It's something I, I oh don't. Oh my god, girl! Really? I don't stop. No, I, but I'm I'm not inside my body. I'm not healthy, right? Okay. Because I know that I don't. Well, I don't eat horribly, but at the same time, just because my weight isn't a certain number, the health, like sure. Because like as we get older, I de we de I definitely have shifted what my priorities are in that regard. Okay. And coming basically after forty, I was like, okay. Agility is a thing. Oh yeah, joints, joints matter. matter. Joints matter. Oh my god, I be cracking. Yes, like I be pill. cracking and popping, and it's wild out here. Oof. So, so I definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not about an aesthetic, but and also I recognized that if I didn't start before the opportunity came, I wouldn't be prepared when it did, and so that's why I've been just going so hard and just you know. 
trying to pick up new skills. When we last saw each other, Gimme Mo was a concept that you had. You had had things that you'd done. You'd, you'd done a, a, a whole show oh, about yeah. it. You had a talk show. Yes. But it was more or less a movement. I hadn't put it on television, I don't think, when we when we saw each other last. Okay, got it. Or maybe we had. I, I honestly no, don't even know. I think it was, I th yeah, I'm trying to think what year it was, but it was at least... Um, at least it, three years ago. Yes, yeah, so it came out on Discovery Life in 2018, mm -hmm. and it had originated actually nine years prior as a website, as an online, you know, uh, kind of news outlet mm -hmm. to empower young people. And I'd used the name in numerous instances, like when I was the UN Youth Champion and I traveled to 24 countries, I did it under the Gimme Mo guise mm -hmm. because it was all about empowering youth. But in that year, I it culminated into a 23-episode, two-season show that came back to back on Discovery Life. Amazing. Yeah, it, it is pretty amazing. Uh, w maybe a lot of people don't know that about you. That This UN Probably thing is not. freaking huge. Can we go into that? Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, I think 12 years ago about, I was named the first ever United Nations Youth Champion for the International Year of Youth. And I initiated and funded a six month global tour where I traveled to 24 countries uh, to understand what young people experienced and faced globally. So I'd gotten this title, but for me, it wasn't just enough to be named something. Sure. I wanted that to have more meaning. And I felt like, you know, living in California uh, in such a privileged position was not the most ideal point of view. And so I traveled with uh, my then partner to, and I went to refugee camps, I met with world leaders, I uh, went to schools and just really gave a voice to the issues that youth were experiencing globally. And it changed me forever. And this was before social media. I was going to so, say, this, was, this could have been an amazing YouTube channel. Absolutely. Oh, it probably uh, would have. And at the same time, it would have been incredible for content. It would have been an amazing... Uh, think to witness. Yeah. And also, though, not having that made it such an authentic experience sure. because I do have moments that are so unique where I got to meet girls that had been trafficked and were on the other side of that and met boys who um, were child soldiers. Oh, and wow. I really had some very in intimate and life altering experiences that I now take with me. But yes, like you said, a lot of people don't know the know that about my journey and that that's really that that that's where I was for mm -hmm. all those years. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Yeah. So, a lot of times celebrities will get offered um opportunities. I actually was asked to go to uh Iraq mm. and uh I did it was like uh, you know, it was like a U, not a UN thing. It was more like a USO thing. Sure. It was a separate company, I guess, that had a government contract that would bring celebrities to war zones, I guess. And then yeah. and then you would be at the bases and you would do meet and greets at yeah. you know. And my mom cried every day. Yeah. She was and and for me, I it was I, I understand that calling. Yeah. I couldn't make that meaningful to me. Mm. Um so what you did, that is like that is amazing mm. that you had that much agency in that experience mm. because you didn't know so much. Right. Well, and that's what speaking of being vulnerable, that's what I that's what I rested on. I rested on the fact that I didn't know that for me, I thought UNICEF was a soccer team because I'd only seen it on jerseys. Mm -hmm. And I allowed what I didn't know and my vulnerability um, to to lead. Mm -hmm. And I walked into rooms and situations saying, I'm not sure what I have to offer other than my ear. I don't know, I, I don't know about these issues, but if learning about them is in some way going to help further your cause and I can be a voice or bring attention to what you are doing that is incredible, then that's what I want. And what I I, I also had imposter syndrome, like majorly mm -hmm. because I didn't feel smart enough, good enough, capable enough, or e enough enough. But then I realized, who am I to feel that way when I am sitting in a village, when I am sitting in a slum, when I am at a refugee camp, when I am talking to someone who literally is just looking for access to clean drinking water, and I feel like I am not worthy of you know, whatever. So for me, it was just really a very grounding experience where I thought, gosh, you know, 
I, if I can be in a position to where I can help someone else know that they have inherent value and that their dreams are possible and that they are seen and loved and cared for, then maybe just that bit of inspiration will be enough for them to take those steps to work harder and to, to do more to, in, in their own communities um, mm-hmm. and to know that the work that they're doing really does matter because someone came all the way to tell them, like, I see you mm. and I honor you. These were people who were already doing the work. Yeah. O- so you were like, keep going. Absolutely. Let's talk about I, your and challenges. I, yeah. And, and and I just learned as I went along. So I started in Australia with mm-hmm. because I had friends there. And I just learned as I went along. And eventually, it was kind of down to a science. I would call a meeting with as many people as would want to sit. And I would say, listen, don't treat me like a Hollywood celebrity. Treat me like someone that, you know, and and show me the real thing. An ambassador. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. And and beautifully after this, so you know, that basically the UN doesn't have any money. I don't know if people know that or not, but they don't. And so I did have to fund this trip. But what I asked of them is can you protect me? Mm. Uh, and can you give me access? By the end of it, they had to hire people <laughs> because I was doing so much. Wow. And afterwards they appointed the first ever special envoy of youth ever. I did apply for the position. Very happy I didn't get it because that was that would not have been my authentic truth, but the work that I did showed them that there was a place for that and that it was you needed. the door open. Yeah, that it was needed for someone to do this full time all the time. So I, I want to get back to this concept of them offering you this specific title, which is that you were the voice for youth. You were a champion. And I asked for it. For youth. Yes. So what happened was I had someone, I've always worked with young people. Mm -hmm. It's just one of my passions. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, someone on my team was like 19 at the time and told me about Youth Day. And I'd never heard of Youth Day. And this was the same year that I initially started Gimme Mo. And he called someone and said, you know, Monique Coleman from High School Musical should come and do a speech here. And I was like, yeah, right. Like, like honestly, they're like, they're really going to say yes. And they did. And so I got to do a speech at the podium at the United Nations in front of the Secretary General and an entire General Assembly. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> and um, I was sitting there and I was, th- that same day I found out that they were launching a year dedicated to young people. And I was shocked. I was like, I don't understand. I'm here, you know, starting this website and I thought I knew everything that was going on with youth. Yeah. And the very silly and, and crazy thing is that their logo looked very similar to mine. Uh, My uh, logo was a thought bubble and theirs was like 15 thought bubbles in all these different colors. And I was like, oh my God, people are going to think that I stole this from the UN. <laughs> no, nobody's thinking anything. <laughs> um, but anyway, I left and I the theme for the year was dialogue and mutual understanding. And I went home and I just couldn't sleep. And I said, you know... I just feel like they need me. And I know that that's crazy because like, who am I? I'm just an actress. But I really feel like that this is calling me specifically because what does dialogue and mutual understanding even mean? A couple of events? No, we need to have difficult conversations about the things that young people are facing. So I wrote them a letter and I basically said, I don't know what you need, but if there's a place for me, I would love to work with you in some way. I think at the time I probably had like 70,000 Twitter followers or something. Mm -hmm. And so I offered up my following and said, I don't know if I can host an event or bake brownies or do whatever, but whatever I can do, um, I would love to. And a few months later, that's when they... Oh, they emailed me. They took a few months to actually. Oh yeah, and I almost didn't read it because I don't check my email. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to think. So, but what I find really interesting about this position that found its way into into your life is that you have always been a champion for young people, and here you are going international. So yes, High School Musical is a part of your your you know part of your legacy. I guess you'd say it's 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 one of the starts of your story. It's not obviously the start of your story. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's frustrating sometimes, at least for me, um, how sometimes people really want us to pander and pander again, and then spill the tea, and then all that's it's all it's it's like so positive, so negative. It's like very, I don't want to say polarizing, but it's like there's only so many boxes, right? And so, and it drives you crazy. Yeah. Um, imagine, you know, experiencing that as a person who's a young person who's dedicated a lot of their childhood to that craft and that career, 
only to say, okay, well, now how am I going to bust out of these boxes right. or this box? And uh, how, how that is extremely amplified for a child. And now yeah. w w the reason I mention this is because you have a very unique ability to empathize mm. from having to witness probably that going around you with some of your co-stars. Yeah. And I love that that transcended this industry into just a general human connection. Yeah. Well, part of it is that I was nine, I was five, four or five years older than right. my next co-star. And I was nine years older than my counterparts. So Corbin and I are nine years apart, or, or maybe, yeah, nine years apart. Vanessa and I are, are eight years apart. So I was 24 years old working with 16 year olds, uh -huh. 15 and 16 year olds, having an entirely different perspective. And then, um, and I feel safe to say this, Disney really broke my heart. Because when I got to the third movie, I, in, in so many ways, I really championed the film. I really, you know, always spoke so positively. And I was a black girl playing the smartest girl in school, which was a very big deal at that time. <laughs> and when it came to promoting the third movie, I wasn't invited on the tour. <laughs> and they said something about there not being enough room on the plane. And they only invited Zach, Vanessa, Ashley, and Corbin. And Lucas and I weren't included. And that heartbreak really hit me very deeply and did cause a bit of a depression because it helped me to recognize that I was overly identifying with what I was doing Thanks. and not who I was. And that was what led me to take that step and say, maybe this is my five minutes of fame. Maybe this is it in some way. And if that is the case, then what am I going to do with it? And I didn't believe that necessarily because I always saw myself as more than just someone who was able to book a job. I knew that there were other things that I wanted to contribute in this world through whether it be writing or directing or, or just other gifts that I wanted to share. But I didn't want to sleep on the fact that I was blessed enough to have co-stars that were so young that I was able to witness grow up, to be in a position to where I had the wherewithal and the, you know, I'd already graduated from college by the time. Yeah, you were was, their big sister. I was their big sister. Yeah. And then to take that out into the world and say, you know what? I'm not going to be, I'm not going to feel reduced to Taylor McKessie. I'm going to rise up and actually walk in the door and let people see me and connect connect this character that was their childhood with who Monique Coleman is and I'm going to leave a message that lets you know that your dreams are also possible. I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. I love you so much. Thank you. I just basically did what I would have wanted someone to do for me. There you go. Okay, so can we go back even way sure. before? Like, how how did you, did you have mentorship when you were growing up in the arts? And Some, somewhat. You okay. know, uh, my mom, so... I, I The way I got into it was actually in fourth grade because I was, or actually it was third grade. My teacher, Tanya Jones, um, God bless her. Shout Ms. out to Ms. Tanya. Ms. Ms. Shout Tanya. out to Miss Tanya. Um, <laughs> basically pulled my mom aside and said, you know, um, she's pretty disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty disruptive and does not stop talking in class. Um, yes. And, you know, struggles in a couple of different areas. However... Uh, I think it's because she's an artist and we should find some activities for her to do and see if that shifts. And so that's what we did. I got in piano lessons and dance classes and acting classes. Um, how inter I'm sorry, that's so interesting because how many people truly are was, truly an artist as they are in a normal school environment and then right. they are advocated for by the teacher themselves. I was very blessed. And then your mom's like, well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this because it's for her health. Yes, yes. That's yes. like very, very rare. Truly. Yeah. And I feel really, I feel really lucky because I would not have survived. Like I literally would not have I would not have survived. Middle school, I would not have survived high school had I not had this outlet. I, I, I consider my soul to be academic. I, I'm a seeker. I love to learn. I have an insatiable appetite right. for information, but I struggle with comprehension still. 
I struggle with literacy at times still. Mm. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slow in, in a number I'm of, so slow. I'm slow in I, so many areas yeah. that I would perceive as making me less intelligent. Mm. But I remember learning about Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. And I was like, I have kinesthetic intelligence. So there, yeah. like, I'm smart with my body, <laughs> you know? And it yeah. was like, it's okay that I don't fit into these boxes or don't, you know, didn't get a good score on my SATs or graduated high school with like a 2.8 or something. Like Mm -hmm. I did not really excel, but the fact that I knew deep down that I had a gift and that I was something special, even if the standardized test didn't tell me that, definitely set me on a course that is very much I think why I'm here today. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And 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 like shout out to Miss T for sure. For sure. But your mom as well. Absolutely. Um, my daughters, they both have their own gifts, you know. And like one of them, I think, is way more into like STEM and science. And like I feel like love her for that. I do too. And I'm really <laughs> trying. Yeah. To keep the magic for both of them. Yeah. And I feel a little split sometimes with having to like. Uh, service both of their sort of personalities and and helping them grow. Um, and so, yeah, like shout out to the, your mom because Absolutely. you could kind of pull your hair out and be like, oh God, I'm going to mess them up. I really don't want to mess them up. I really yeah. want to help them. Yeah. And and I, I, I do shout out to my mother because, you know, we, those things that I did were also very expensive and we could not afford to do them. And my mother taught me at a very young age that you never should let money keep you from being or doing what you're meant to do. So she always, whether it would be work study or getting me on scholarships or things like that, she really instilled that there was, a, we we just found a way. Yeah. Um, so th- she didn't want to like push you into the biz or? Well, no, I mean, I did start doing things, but that was yeah. also, you know, a very expensive path to take. So I did my first movie when I was 12. Okay. Yeah. And then I did another movie when I was 15 or 16. And uh, and she never did actually push me anywhere. She was actually the opposite and was mm-hmm. very much like, if you don't want to do this, don't waste my time. Mm-hmm. And so it was something I had to genuinely be passionate about, um, which I, I very clearly was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Absolutely. I yeah, I definitely didn't have a momager by any stretch of the imagination. I just want to ask you, and obviously we are not naming names. Yeah. Um, but have you seen egregious stage parents in your time in life? Definitely. I've definitely seen that. And it, and it really breaks my heart because it it is a form of abuse, I, I find. I think that, you know, when you um, – when you're living through your child, I've definitely seen that. Uh, and just not really, yeah, where it's where I've seen parents where it feels like it's more about them than it is about the child. And you knew and that. that's super detrimental. Being a little older, like, did you know that? Kind yes. of seeing that. Yeah, and, also, and also as a peer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just experiencing that and going, yeah, no, this is something that I can't not do. I don't know if your kid actually wants to do it at all. It's hard because what happens in the community, because we are a community, yes. of uh, the artist community, but then also, too, when you look at the community of young performers or high-performing young artists, yes. um, I think then you can, you can observe it and say, well, I've, I've got my stuff together, mm. and I'm doing this for the right reasons, but my friends... Are, are in these abusive situations. Like, it must feel so hard being on the other side. Like, what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to help these people? Right. That is a great question. One of the ways that we can be supportive is by transparency, having real conversations, and being honest about our own experiences, and not necessarily judging others in their experience, but giving them the opportunity to see themselves and to see um, to see where that might also impact them in their lives and in their journey. What do we do as a, a, a healing community mm. um, of people who have endured a certain amount of I guess I don't want to call it. I don't. I really don't want to demonize child acting. Like I oh, really, yeah, absolutely. I really don't. Like I, I really believe in yeah. kids like yourself who like 
were destined for this, that this right. saved their life. Like, Absolutely. There really are kids that exist that way. I really think there are people like Jonathan Lipnicki, mm -hmm. Taj, Tia, Tamara. And like, I feel like there are people that were destined to do this. Absolutely. And, and, and it's really interesting that you bring up that it saved Yeah, for you. me, it was literally, like, I don't know. The detriment is that for a period of my life, it was who I thought I was and not what I did. And so as I've gotten older, I've had to create some separation from that sure. and recognize that the experiences that my characters have had, the, the roles that I've played are not my life. And that, because I, I also did experience... Uh, several hardships that I won't really get into until I'm able to speak about them fully. Uh -huh. But I did experience certain things that uh, made me feel as though I wasn't allowed to have my own emotions, mm -hmm. for instance. And so uh, my emotional body was very much my ability to act, mm -hmm. not my ability to feel or experience things myself. Well, it's weird about with acting. It's like you're going to have to channel your emotions. Exactly. Save your emotions right. for the performance. Right. But also there were things that I was not allowed to feel in my real life because it was it was harmful, uh, whether that be anger or disappointment mm -hmm. or things like that. Um, I was very sheltered in some ways. And I, you know, I love my mom and I don't want to put her on blast in a negative way, but we really did have a difficult relationship when I was younger. Got it. And so for me, acting was an outlet. It was a space, it was, a, it, that was a safe space for me to exist, uh, but except that I didn't realize that I didn't exist. I was synonymous with something else. And eventually I would have to grow up and create a separation where I went through certain experiences myself, had certain traumas and over, overcame things as a real person. What I will say though, is that I just got to do an episode of High School Musical, the musical, the series. Oh, yay! yay! I remember. Was yes. it one episode? Uh, yes, so far. Okay, because so I, was was I thought it was an arc. You guys made the best content. Thank you. You did a bunch thank of really so fun TikToks. Thank and you. I was like, oh, they're doing it. Yeah, thank Corbin's you. Corbin's there. Yes, Lucas. Corbin, Casey, Lucas, yeah. uh, Bart Johnson. We're I love all there. Bart. I know, I love he's him. so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so we were there and we it was one day after lunch. This is this is an example of how I think things can change and are changing. Okay. So we were on You mean on set? Yes. On a Disney set too. On a Disney set. That's amazing. So we're on set and it was after lunch and things were getting a little bit loud and a little bit crazy because that's how it is after lunch. Yeah. And uh Tim Federley got on, over the microphone and quieted everyone down and asked if we would all just take a moment and take three deep breaths. Hmm. It was the simplest and most profound moment I have experienced probably in my 30 years on set because at a moment that t a tip typically a director would have yelled, screamed, an AD would have acted out. Instead, he got so quiet and got everyone else to get so quiet. And I was like, wow, A, I'd like to shadow you, and B, this is the change that we actually want to see. I really think that we have to believe that it's possible and shift our perspective from thinking that sets have to be these chaotic spaces. Oh, they, gl they glamorize they it. They glamorize that, or that you have to be pushed to no end, yeah. when in fact, you know, there can be tools that are put in place with therapists, with meditation, with quiet rooms, and things like that, that actually support the well-being of the person, not just the performance. And I believe that when you support the well-being of the person, you ultimately get a better performance. I was just going to say the same thing. You get the best work. Absolutely. From no infighting. Yeah. From, you know, the and actors I, and or I think the production a, and the... Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I think a lot of us, and I, I don't want to speak, I don't want to make a gross generalization because I'm not a part of this generation necessarily. But in my generation, I feel like a lot of us came from our pain body. A lot of us had some sort of trauma that, or some sort of trigger that pushed us into being an artist, whether it be ourselves, our parents, whomever. But there, it was more than just doing it for joy and fun. 
to the point where I had a period in my life, in my career, where I didn't believe that I could be joyful and be talented and successful. And that, I think, has to change. I think, you know, we listen, we hear about Stanley Kubricks, we hear about people that pushed you to no end, and look at what the consequences were of that. And now I think we're recognizing that there is such a need to support the mental health of the artist who is giving so much of themselves and to not just milk them for everything that they're that they're worth and that that is actually completely unacceptable. Yeah, it's exploitive. It, it's, comp- it's it's absolutely exploitive. It's a system of it currently serves as a system of oppression, I know. I realize this yeah. now, especially when it comes in with 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 some parts, some productions, not every production, but with children. And so my concern is protocols and how we fix it. Yeah. And I loved what you were talking about with transparency. I want to go back to transparency. So getting people to talk about, especially if they're in the middle of, yeah. it's going to be really hard to get a round table together mm. where we can actually get some credibility from people who are a list or have names right. or whatever. And you know, when Allison was here just recently, we're doing a sort of a bit of a call to action. Yes. And the call to action is truly, I don't say this on every one of my episodes, sure. but with Monique, it's it's that she's a part of our community and she's mm. um and she's it's important that we are not isolated anymore. Yeah. That we come together and we see each other and well, and the other thing that I've always mentioned is that the data is not there. Mm. And so what will probably start to happen is uh, uh, research. Yes. And when you cannot refute the numbers right. of how many people are, are, you know, suffering how many years later or right. trying to understand these things. And so I just think it's so beautiful that you, Allison, have found a way through movement yeah, and through connecting with the body because so much of what ends up happening is like what you're saying is- Disassociating. Yeah. And the trauma might not actually be that deep. Right. It just might be that you haven't handled it and then it compounds because Absolutely. you're disconnected to it. And I think, you know, for anyone out there that- you know, has had this experience or is trepidatious about speaking up, I think it's important your intention and where you're coming from. That's really what it's about. I, I, I don't share something because I'm ever trying to point fingers or blame. No, that's not helpful. Ever. I actually yeah. think that when we come from a point of empathy and compassion, first and foremost with ourselves, and we recognize that through through having these difficult conversations, we actually can heal. And when we heal, like there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. Yes. Well, heal people heal people. Ooh. And I think that we need it. to promote healing on this planet and we need to promote healing in our lives and in our relationships, but that only will come when we first acknowledge that we've been hurt in the first place. That's the transparency. Yeah. And you have to double down, unfortunately, with data, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's going to take some time. But people will know that, you know, we're, we're organizing in not a way that's, um, I, I always say whistleblowing, but it's like we're not trying to hurt production or stand not in the way of production. It's like what you just said, what they, what they did on that Disney set. It's like, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. I think of intimacy coordinators that they have now. Yes. And how that movement has probably helped so many women Absolutely. and even men d d approach their, you know? Yeah. And we have to recognize that we have collectively gone into agreement with each other about certain things. When I look back and think about how popular Lolita was at the time or think about certain films that we promoted and certain people that we advocated, we also as a society have to take responsibility for our role in allowing these things to happen. And we cannot just point fingers at everybody and say, oh, you did this and you did that. No, we also bought it, we consumed it, and we can contributed to it. And so it's also holding ourselves accountable and saying, when we see something, say something, and don't put your money in places that you don't, for uh, and to promote things that you do not agree with. I truly, uh, I love TikTok for this reason, because the comment section is extremely impactful and is very clear. It's an aggregate mm. of, of, of thought. And it's, uh, it's a really beautiful thing to see when you're getting that feedback and that support as the creator, or if you have a thought, people expand on that thought, or right. if you have an initiative. 
Um, because honestly, so many people want to help, but they don't know how. Right. And so like re recently when I've been posting things um, about certain deeper things that have been happening recently, um, they've been really supportive. And um, it's, it's – people want to help. Yeah. But then they consume – the gossip. True. And they consume the tea. True. And it's, I think we have to acknowledge that part of it will always be human. Sure. It's, Absolutely. It's when people see yeah. a car accident and they yeah. can't, and, and they yeah. can't look away. Yeah. And I think part of that, if we were to unpack it, is because it, it faces them with their own like yeah. shit, I yeah. guess. Absolutely. Mortality yeah. or um, vulnerabilities, human, I don't know. Yeah. No, it, I mean, I definitely think it's part of the human experience. However, if we're going to be more conscious, and that's not meant to be a woo-woo expression, it's just, you know, as technology grows, as we have more barriers to human connection, we perceive them as, as making us more connected, but in, in many ways, they are actually deeply making us more detached and have less empathy, then it is more important that we do rise in our consciousness and that we are able to separate what we see from what is actually happening, entertainment from when something isn't funny. And, you know, a lot of times I, I feel sad. I look at comedians and I'm like, oh, no, I, you know, I, I don't want you to get canceled because of what you said. And also the advocacy for, you know, different marginalized groups having a voice, it, it, you know, we're, we're kind of in this interesting space where we are kind of shifting in entertainment and figuring, like figuring that all out yeah. and we're figuring it out together. And I think the, the anecdote for all of that is having vulnerability, empathy, and compassion for one another, even when we say the wrong things. Okay. And not just being so quick to cancel each other, yeah. but instead to, to be deeper listeners, mm -hmm. to apologize fast, to ask for forgiveness. Got it. And to recognize that, you know, none you know of us why are that might actually work is because it's such a fast turnaround. Yes. But when you're canceled, it feels very finite. Right. And also it it removes your ability to ever do your job again. Right. And so you 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 and that's what's punitive, is that it's like, oh my gosh. They've suffered and they will never come back from this. And I did what I, I was a part of that. Right. I, I helped cancel them. I chimed in. That's right. where that's where my service was in in poo pooing this. So when pe that's why people I think feel like they're doing something right. when they're commenting. But and, and I understand that. But I also think that sometimes we are more interested in in being right than we are in being productive and being productive yeah that actually how do we get to a place where we feel whole and we can move forward right together yeah i think people like you're saying like people aren't realizing that we're all interconnected we're yeah. all human and so we all are coming from the same place ultimately. mess yeah, exactly. genetic gook yeah exactly <laughs> and if you're a person of faith it's like yeah like we are really all related absolutely yeah um, okay. So let's continue because, um, I, it has, it really has been a minute since we'll be able to catch up. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to just take a little minute here to look it up. So, so we don't know if you're going to go back on High School Musical, but how was it? How, what, what was that experience like? It was so nostalgic, like next level because 15 years is a long time uh, fictitiously, and it's a long time in real life. It's very meta. It's so meta. I love what they're doing. It's so meta. It's <laughs> so cool. And it was just beautiful to see how different this generation is. These kids are gorgeous. They're so beautiful. They're so talented. They're really grounded. They're absolutely there for each other. I was going to say, are they good to one another? Oh my God. Which we were as well. <laughs> we, you know, we, yeah. we really, we've always had each other's backs. We've always kind of protected each other. I love that. And I can see that they have that same energy. And going back was really cool because in some spaces we're not cool. You know, like, yes, it was a huge m movement, yeah. but there's also people who still want to be like, I did not, like, I am not a High School Musical fan. To be on that set and to to be kind of the reason why they are there yeah. was just really super, super special. And mm -hmm. when we walked into the gymnasium for the first time, yeah. literally, I, had, I walked in, I turned around, and I walked right back out because my eyes flooded with tears. And I had to take a deep breath and be like, Monique, like, 
just, you know, you have to be professional right now. But it was really moving because it really did change our lives. Our real lives were changed 15 years ago or 17 years ago. How is everybody? (laughs) How's Zach? How's Vanessa? Haven't spoken to Zach in quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, But every time I see anything that he's doing, I'm always there to support. Yeah. And I mean, we're all good. Yeah. We were good kids. You know, so yeah. we're, I think we're good adults. You know, I it's yeah. it's kind of neat to see everybody kind of do their own things. Uh, Ashley's a mom now. I know. And I, I was in Target and I saw Frenchie. Yes. And I was like, work. I was like, because yes. it smells amazing. Oh, my god, it's a quality product. Absolutely. Yeah. And I remember when, when she was young and she wanted to be Jessica Simpson. You know, she <laughs> wanted to have her own product lines and stuff. And there I was like, goes. girl, you're going to do it, you know. Yeah. And. Um, I'm just proud of everyone. I'm proud Aww. of not just what we've all done, but who we are. Who we are. Mm-hmm. Corbin is by far one of the most hardest working people I know. Every He's time a I look beautiful, up, beautiful, beautiful soul and a beautiful man. Beautiful man, <laughs> beautiful soul. Yeah. And we we actually uh, reunited a, a couple of years ago on a mm-hmm. Christmas movie. I know. And the re- I saw it. It was yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. And the reception was so great that we have actually been talking about developing something together. Because, yes, like, we love that people love us. Uh, and also, we just love each other. And yeah. so we were like, you know what? This is something that we should explore as a series. Or oh, just yes. give us an opportunity to show up to work every day with people that we love. Tell a great story. So that's something that we're, we're we are working on. That's amazing. That is yeah. exciting. I'm really excited for you. Yeah, thank you. Because I know that. That would be amazing. And that, do you th- yeah. would you want to work with Disney again? I would be so open to working with Disney. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, Good. Disney, like obviously High School Musical, the musical the series, is on Disney+. Plus. Uh-huh. Um, Disney's my alma mater. I tell them all the time. I would love to come home. I love that. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like, especially with Disney+, Plus, there's so much more opportunity. It's not the same Disney Channel. It, it's not the same as as, as Disney Channel. And, and there was a lot of limitation in terms of right. what you were able to do and show. And so I would... Absolutely, like be so open to a show on Disney. Oh my gosh! No, you that heard would be it. Very cool. You heard it. So you guys got to make try to make it happen. Yes, yes. The fans do still matter. Absolutely. We yeah. we wouldn't be who we are if, without them. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about your fans? Like when they come up to you. I well, it's so interesting because I don't. I I rarely use the word fans. I know I don't like it either. Yeah. Um. I, I say like supporters, yes. like my family, like people. Absolutely. That, yeah, it's very weird. I'm just grateful that, that I'm grateful that people have kept my career alive. And usually when people come up to me, often they tell me that I'm their childhood. Right. They um, say the same thing. You're my child. You're my childhood. Like, how did we all come up with this same sentence? Yeah. It's like, and that's, <laughs> and that's really special. Cause that's like part of your core memories. Like if mm-hmm. anyone ever saw inside out, your, mm-hmm. you know, your core memories, we're those little balls. Yeah. We're those little balls. And Aww. so I always try to remind them that like, I, I appreciate your love. I'm so grateful for it. But please know that like this, anything that you want is also possible. Aww. And what you see in me is probably somewhere in you. So you just like thank you, but also like go away knowing that you and your dreams matter just as much. Dang, I'm I'm slacking. I need to tell people something <laughs> positive. I'll be like, I, well, I compliment people, people love, a lot. No, I do the I'm same. Like, you have the best eyes. I'm like, oh, I love your shirt. I'm yeah. like, and I'm genuine. Of course you like, are. I legitimately, if I I meet somebody at like Comic Cons. Yes, I just have to compliment them because there's just no way to break the ice on Absolutely. a human level. Absolutely, and, and, and it helps people to feel seen and and be present because I think when they meet us, it's like they go to this other. They Absolutely. go. They go, first of all, they go back. They to go the back to to the moment that 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 you were most significant in That's their why memories. That's why they're so they're so childlike when we Absolutely. meet them. Absolutely, and I'm but just I like, think about like Kim Possible and like <laughs> just the the girls empowerment, and you know, I think about. Like that means something, you know. It like, means to, a lot to me. I really, have two daughters. Yeah, mm-hmm. to have someone that you can look up to, to to have someone that you know is strong and yeah. cool. Like I didn't feel strong or cool, <laughs> and probably until my late twenties. I and, feel you, and I, I, be, I mean, I do now. Cause no, like, I because I'm she, about to be, I'm about to be forty two, and I'm like, look at me. But it took a <laughs> her really, blazer game is on point, people. Thank you. She came here with two of the most <laughs> fabulous. Freaking blazers I've ever seen. I'm Thank not sure you. I can afford them, but I, I may try. Thank you. They Thank are you. worth it. Gorgeous. Thank you. I, You know, I, it took a lot for me to learn to love myself. It took a lot. It took a lot of heartache. It took a lot of 
self-sabotage. It, it was just so much for me to recognize my own inherent value. And when people look and they can say, Taylor McKessie is the reason why I became an actor, or Taylor McKessie made me think I could be president, or, or whatever, I get to realize that I didn't have something that I now get to give to somebody else just by existing. And True. that alone is just very, very cool. Yeah, there, that was not an accident. Yeah. And also hard work. True. You guys, when I look back and I see the dances that you guys had to do True. and like all of the singing and now we, we look at, they've got zombies now, but like before that it was uh, the Descendants or whatever, right? Right, right. And it's like these kids, man. Yeah. The amount of work and just like effort that, and they, they're True. just, they're learning so much about their craft. True. And like they're becoming all these very iconic people now. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it is, and it, you guys did start that. You guys really did. I will say, though, that before High School Musical <laughs> was the Even Stevens musical. <laughs> <laughs> we went to there the you moon go. You, in I mean, 1969. You did. There, there you go. You know? Oh, my God. It's so funny the way that people will never let me live that song down. Oh, but, my goodness. Um, okay, so we need to just chat. I, I know we were wanting to talk about the Give Me an A Mm. Um, and, uh, the Roe v. Wade anthology. I want to talk about what that is and how, and how you're getting it out there. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll speak very briefly about it cause I'm just really just a part of it, but, okay. um, most recently I was able to participate in this film called Give Me an A, mm -hmm. which was, it is an anthology, uh, of 17 female directors, 17 short films, all from a different perspective about just basically how it was it's women coming together to fight to use entertainment to fight back mm -hmm. against obviously Roe v Wade being overturned Got and it. uh we it recently screened at the Chinese theater wow which was very cool and yeah. it was it was i i just found it to be so I didn't know how you could even do something like this but somehow it was woven together so beautifully um, my my good my childhood friend Bonnie Kathleen uh, directed the short that I was in, uh, which oh my gosh I can't believe the name is Blake oh called DTF oh boy mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can probably imagine what that stands for uh -huh, uh -huh. and it was basically an app and I played this lawyer who was executing a sex contract because now that abortion was illegal before uh, this young woman engaged in sex uh, on with this guy from this app, she wanted to make sure that it was uh, clear that she has no interest in raising a child and that he would be comfortable with um, with taking full financial and all responsibility for if a kid was born. Because she was there. a lawyer. Oh, this yeah. is, okay. So it's a very, it's a satirical kind of commentary. That's what's yeah. ours. But there's, there's horrors, there's really abstract, there's comedies, there's wow. musicals. And it was just, uh, I mean, it's it's an incredible project if, if people get a chance to check it out. So are you finding yourself being part of productions on an independent scale that uh, have intention? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, you know, I really kind of struggled after High School Musical, if I'm mm -hmm. honest. You know, I obviously left and traveled the world and yeah. did all of that. And you would think that that would have some merit, but in Hollywood, it didn't. It Nobody cared. Not <laughs> even Broadway. People yeah. don't even care if you go and do Broadway. Right. They're just like, she's left LA? Okay. Like, okay. Well, you, you Basically, it feels like you kind of have to start over. Yeah. I mean, and, I see Corbin and it's like, and you were on dancing, right? I was on dancing. Right. Yeah. And I feel like dancing really made it you and Corbin visible again. Definitely. And it's like so many people do dancing for that visibility, especially yeah. when they're in our position where it's like, I was on Disney and I I have all these other talents and Absolutely. facets and I'm this whole I'm this whole person. Yeah. And this generation has definitely changed that with social media and right. YouTube yeah. and and content creators and so forth, but I definitely feel like I kind of fell in the gap there for a moment where I didn't I wasn't a part of the the wave that was coming, but also wasn't being chosen still by by the industry mm -hmm. and that used to upset me. That used to make me mad. That used to make me feel less than. And now it just lights me up and fuels me. And, Hell yeah. And it sets me on fire because I'm like, just you wait. Oh, like, yes. Yeah. Okay, so what can we expect? What's coming up? How are we finding you? Uh, well, you can definitely find me on socials, mm -hmm. uh, mostly on Instagram mm -hmm. at underscore Monique Coleman. Uh, I am also a part of a short film, a, a short animated film. Uh, 
film called Asali, mm-hmm. uh, Power of the Pollinators, which is by this young woman named Maya Penn, and Viola Davis's company is producing it. That's amazing. And I play an Earth Guardian named Samara. Um, and I was actually talking on my way up the stairs here today that about something I completely forgot about, which is that I am kind of hanging Gimme Mo, putting Gimme Mo on the shelf for a while mm-hmm. because I feel that it did what it needed to do and that this generation really does have a sense of empowerment and understanding and kind of autonomy. Um, and I want to do something called Motivated Kids where I do create affirmations, and I wrote a children's book called Affirmation Alphabet uh, that I am looking for. I need that. <laughs> dis- I am looking for distribution. I don't know how to, to how to put the pieces together. I wrote it a few years ago, and I'm looking for how to get it out into the world. It's a lovely book. So using, DM you. Yes, okay. using the uh, letters of the alphabet as a way to teach kids affirmations and also for parents to be able to speak life over their children. And I just, I want to basically be kind of like a Fred Rogers meets Mrs. Frizzle as me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, Ooh, yeah, I, I love really that. want to create uh, children's content and, and, you're do called that. to do that right Very now. Very much so. Ooh, I back that 100%. Thank I'll you. watch it. I'll, I'll, Thank you. If you want this space, you can use this space. Thank like, you. Please. I love you. I support everything yeah. you do. And um, Thank you. This is not And it's over. like songs and things. It's oh, like, yes. I'm safe to be sad and not always glad. Because sometimes we're sad. Like things like that. And that's yeah. the character? Is yeah. that her? Yeah, we have all I have all these different little characters. Oh my gosh. So yeah. This is this and is Mighty Mo, who sometimes feels like she's gonna blow everything up because her feelings are just so big. I love this. Yeah. The kids need this. Yeah, I needed this. Oh, it's yeah. it's my inner child just Ooh. coming out to play and this. to know that, yeah, she's value. Okay, I'm backing this. I love this. Thank I you. want this. I want this very much now. Thank and I'm like, can I produce? Can I help produce it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's make things happen. Let's have a YouTube. Let's have it on YouTube and make coin too. Because cool. those kids need actual content that has value. Yeah, that actually helps them. Let's do it. All right. Cool. I love you. I love you. This is not goodbye. Absolutely not. But go ahead and follow her, guys, and support Miss Monique. Thank you. Mm-hmm.